Francis is only 23, but has already been involved in a diverse range of ventures. And tonight he's going to tell us some of the lessons he's learned and about his latest venture, which is fundmind.com. Thank you. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Um, well, uh, thanks so much, um, guys, for uh, inviting me here. What an honour um, to be able to speak to. Well, uh, I guess a room full of some of the uh, smartest young people in the country. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Um, um, I mean, it was, it was interesting because I was actually, I, well, I came, came to interview at Oxford a while ago. I uh, got rejected, but, um, <laughs> you know, for the past however long, five years, I've been working on how to get you guys to invite me back to speak here. Um, so I guess I succeeded. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys obviously, uh, I, I, I assume there's a mixture of Oxford Union and Business Society people here. So I'll be speaking, obviously, a bit about um, what I've done in the business world, uh, uh, which is, you know, a, a fair amount, um, and what I've done on TV, which is a couple of seasons. Um, but, um, you know, hopefully, because I don't think the TV show really gives you a, a clear picture of what I, what I actually do. I think probably a lot of you are kind of wondering what I, what I do and whether I've actually done anything. Um, <laughs> I mean, I had a few people come up to me, well, why don't you have a printer or a computer in your office? It's, it's kind of nuts, how do you get anything done? <laughs> um, and, well, the truth is that's actually my meeting room which is the only room in my office big enough to actually fit an entire film crew in. Um, so I guess that was, uh, well, my own mistake. But uh, to give you a little bit of a background, um, uh, my, my family is in, uh, well, it has been in mining and, and various other industries for, for a, a, a good few years, well, a good few decades. And uh, so my first, well, actually, my first business was sort of, yeah, I. I had, knew I had a, this access to these diamonds when I was at uh, boarding school, and I sort of got wind of a few people who were um, thinking about proposing to their fiancés, sort of friends, older brothers and sisters, and things like that, um, and sort of few uh, engagement rings, which, um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was an easy thing to do back then, and, uh, and it was fun, and I got to go to a few weddings. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that part of it. Um, and then I uh, went to, well, I got rejected from Oxford, and then went to Edinburgh to study philosophy. Um, I originally, uh, interestingly enough, didn't want to go into business. I wanted to be an artist. Um, I was the art scholar at my school, and, uh, and I sort of, uh, I went to study philosophy because I wasn't sure if I got a bit disillusioned by the art world and, and, and uh, thought, right, well, I'll study philosophy and kind of um, maybe, maybe it'll answer some of my questions. Um, but it just gave me, I suppose, a lot more questions and fewer answers. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so, this, so this, this, this sort of fledgling business that I had at school um, was something that sort of expanded by word of mouth. and. Um, and in one of my summer holidays, uh, I went over to uh, work for this mining company in Madagascar, um, Madagascar Minerals. And uh, I was having um, I was having dinner um, in Antananarivo, the capital of uh, <coughs> Madagascar, with a guy from a company called Rio Tinto, which I'm sure a lot of people in the business guild will, will be aware of. And I was talking about what I'd been doing in the diamond world, and uh, he. Um, well, he posed the question of why, why aren't people investing in diamonds? Because at the time they weren't, and this was around 2008, just after the um, uh, financial crack, well, the credit crunch. And um, so I, uh, yeah, it sort of gave me the idea to go back and see if I could start actually marketing diamonds as, 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 as an investment, or as a sort of, you know, a realistic hard asset class. And um, so then I, yeah, I set up this company, um, IDAS, uh, which then marketed portfolios of rough and polished diamonds to 
banks, sort of wealth management funds, um, private investors, um, and um, and it went really well. I mean, it was, we were kind of pioneering that, uh, that, you know, I guess that use of use of diamonds as a, as, a, as an investment class. And uh, we're looking into selling up a diamond ETF at one point, and uh, and yeah, so it was a, it was it was a, it was, a, it, was a, it was started off as a little uh, just a little hobby, I guess, at school. And expanded into this quite scarily uh, successful thing. Um, and uh, I won't bore you too long talking about the business side of things. I'll get into Red and Chelsea eventually. <laughs> um, um, but so then, uh, so yeah, then I um, uh, sort of started expanding the business and expanded into more sort of commodity, uh, sort of precious metals. Was exporting uh, sort of like gold dust to to buy. Um, and it was it was kind of interesting because I was doing this all from I guess my uh, my room at university, uh, and I sort of ostracised myself from uh, from a lot of my friends who wanted to go out and just get fucked up on meow meow or whatever. They do. <laughs> um, and uh, and so uh, yeah, I, I just sort of yeah I I I resisted temptation for the old MCAT. and. Um, I guess just kept my head down, and uh, and then I basically met this guy. I came down to London. Uh, I met this guy who had um, basically been working on this. This uh, it was a sort of real-time contact management solution. It was, I met him in the smoking area of Whiskey Mist. I think. Um, uh, I, and funnily enough, I've actually met a couple of business partners in the smoking areas of clubs. So uh, I'm not encouraging you to smoke, but give it some thought if you're looking for business. <laughs> um, and uh, so then I became involved in this uh, this uh, telecom startup and sort of invested uh, some money that I had made from the commodity side of things and put that sort of on, on ice for a, for a bit. I mean, because as successful, successful as it was, it did really um, require quite a lot of energy and uh, um, well, I, uh, that ex also explains why I sort of stopped out of Edinburgh, but we won't get into that. Um, but. But the, the telecom thing was uh, was great fun, and it actually really taught me a lot about, I guess, being a part of a startup and and pushing forward, and also raising finance, um, which I guess uh, leads me on to my most recent venture, because one of the things, one of the <coughs> hardest things that you'll ever, you'll ever try and do um, is raise finance for a for a company. It's, it's you know harder to raise finance than it is to get struck by lightning. Um, and particularly in uh, tough economic times uh, as we're experiencing now. Um, so, Fundmine, which I um, um, launched uh, sort of privately last December, is, I guess, um, it's a very noble company because it helps, uh, if I say so myself, it, it will explain why. Um, well, it helps, I guess, people realize their dreams and people. You know, uh, particularly in your position, where you're you're going out into a world where, you know, there are there are you know, in, well, increasingly less job options. Um, I mean, you guys are at Oxford to a, a bit more advantaged uh, than than most. Not because you're any more intelligent, just because people seem to be really respect the Oxbridge <laughs> seal of approval for some reason. I mean, uh, but no, no, you are very intelligent, I'm sure. Um, and uh, so. I guess, um, you know, I don't know how many of you have ever set up a company or tried to raise finance or intend to. Actually, do you have a show of hands? It sounds interest. Good. Not enough of you, but, uh, but uh, hopefully after this you'll feel inspired because if I can do that, surely you guys can. Um, so, yeah, so we, we sent, it's like an online angel investment network. So I guess uh, in, in, in the most basic terms, You've all seen the program Dragon's Den, right? With, with those um, incredibly smug, vain investors. I can't remember their names. Um, what are their names? James Kahn, Deborah Me. I hope they're not in the audience. Um, <laughs> but we, we sort of, I guess, have set up a system where entrepreneurs can have exposure to um, investors with, I guess, more money, probably, than them. Um, more experience, uh, and I guess um, people. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's you're obviously opening up that to um, you know 
a broader, a broader spectrum of people. So, um, so yes, uh, that's that's a fun mine. We uh, have had quite a lot of support from people in government, so it's it's exciting, and it's I mean obviously it's in its infant stages, but we hope to uh, to really um, expand that in the next 12 months. And so, you know, rather than well, I mean, some of you probably will uh, you know, take the comfortable path, and that, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. There's no you can become incredibly successful. Uh, without starting up your own company, as you probably um, have thought about doing. So, um, but you know, I just you know, there are a few of you who could potentially uh, be the next, you know, Bill Gates or Richard Branson or I wouldn't say Francis Paul. You know, <laughs> I'm one of a kind. Uh, I, I wouldn't even try and uh, emulate me. But. Um, but so when you are um, at a point where you're trying to raise finance, I think FundMine should really uh, be your first stop. And then, anyway, enough of uh, that, because I don't want uh, to oversell it. Um, but it's a great company. Um, uh, anyway, well, I spoke a bit about that. I don't know what else I'm going to talk about. Lessons I've learned. Okay, so, um, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm only 23, so I'm not going to, you know, I guess, you know, a lot of you guys probably know a lot more than I do. Um, but I'll, I suppose I've learned quite a bit from the things I've been in when I've looked at this paper. Yeah, I made a list of stuff, of things that I've learned. But I think, I think hopefully, uh, some of you guys will enjoy, or uh, take to heart and hopefully remember. Um, I should start. Okay, well, I actually was asked this in, uh, in a sort of interview earlier today. Um, you know, they asked me what the most important thing um, I've learned in, 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 in business, or at least what, what the most important thing is to have a successful business or, or to achieve success in, in entrepreneurship and enterprise. I mean, I, I think the most important thing that I've found is just having a good business partner. Um, and that's not to say that I haven't worked hard. I haven't lumped, in, lumped my business partner with all of the work. Um, but it is incredibly important to have to find someone um, who is as hungry as you, who is smart, and who is, um, you know, I guess, reliable and, and, and willing to, to to really push things forward. And um, you know, and that, so I think, as well as finding a good business partner, you should also you should also find, you surround yourself. Oh, oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just in the middle of something. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's funny actually, that's my business partner. <laughs> Wait, spooky, spooky. Um, so yeah, so I think, I think that's probably one of the most, um, by the way, I'm not gonna go on for too long, I'd rather uh, you guys ask me some questions, so I hope you won't be talking about things you don't want to hear. Um, so, so the most important thing I think is having a business partner. But well, secondly, I guess you probably have a business as well. That might help. Um, and you know, a lot of people, I guess, spend a lot of time trying to come up with this sort of, I guess, the Higgs boson of business ideas. But I mean, it really doesn't have to be that complicated. You know, you know, anything can be a business, and you shouldn't really. And also, there's nothing wrong with, I guess, looking at someone else's business and saying, well, I could probably do that. I could probably do it a bit better than that. So um, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to take your idea and improve on it, and and uh, and that's also pretty easy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with. I mean, and, and there have been success, some successful uh, uh, internet entrepreneurs in the UK who have looked at things going on in America and and basically replicated them in the UK and then sold them off to the company that they stole it from uh, for quite a lot of money. Well, I'm not encouraging stealing, but I'm encouraging innovation and improvement. Um, and uh, and uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't spoken about everything I've, I've uh, done in business, because I'm sure a lot of you are probably more interested in um, Mid and Chelsea. And uh, I actually have a book coming out, so I'll explain all of that to you uh, as well. Um, and actually, we'll, we'll go into more depth about, I guess, the lessons I've learned. But I've still got some more here, but I, shall I, do you want me to go on? Sorry. It's, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm not the best public speaker, but um, hopefully um, I'm not 
doing too badly. Um, okay, well, I guess um, you guys don't really have a problem with this being Oxford, but I've always found it incredibly important uh, to surround yourself with, you know, other people who, uh, you know, want to achieve something. Um, and, and, you know, that goes hand in hand with, you know, having, finding a good business partner. You know, if you surround yourself with other people who want to achieve su success, then, uh, you know, you're more likely to. And obviously they say that, you know, your ultimate uh, net worth is the average of your five closest friends, so uh, I guess you've got to pick them wisely, right? Um, that's not to say, you know, gravitate towards, uh, I guess, rich kids. Because <laughs> a lot of them don't really actually have an interest in uh, uh, doing anything, or at least competing with their parents' success. Which is a shame, you know. You have to be, you have to be worth your uh, fortune. Uh, a wise man once said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> "What do you say?" Um, oh yes, a man who's worth his fortune uh, would have made it either way. Um, and I think that's that's pretty true. I think you have to be, uh, you have to be able to, um, I suppose, build on every day and build on every every new achievement and uh, you know we're only we only get one life so we might as well just mm. I guess go on a reality TV show. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't advise that to anyone. Not that it was bad but um, anyway we're actually moving on why don't we actually put some questions to the audience about firstly well actually business or main chance you don't really care. Um, Yes, you. You had your own the first. What do you mean by uh, conflict items? Of conflict items? Of buying conflict items? Well, I think it's obviously wrong. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's not so much of a problem these days. I mean, there are certain, um, um, I guess, standards in place, uh, um, particularly GIA standards have, 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 um, have uh, really put, put a stop to a lot of that. I mean, there's still some... some uh, Conflict diamonds in uh, coming out of Congo and in Zimbabwe, but uh, I mean, it you know, the uh, industry has got pretty good at um, finding out where where the, the where this sense of, uh, originated from. So I don't think it's much of an issue today. But uh, I mean, you know, where you know where there are resources, there will always be conflict, and you know, there's always going to be someone to buy those resources. So it's a sort of it's a it's a problem that uh, will come and go. Yes. So this is a question about uh, meritocracy in Britain, but basically from what you said, I have so much respect for what you've achieved, and it seems incredible how many businesses you've made successful, but your initial leg up seems to be through contacts of your parents and the, the you know, assets that your friends, friends have had or their friends' siblings. What do you think Britain needs to do? I mean, made in Chelsea, you've got interns in to show, you know, get, give them a leg up, maybe. What can you, what can you say about you know, the state of meritocracy in England and the responsibility of, of large business holders to making sure that people are kind of moving up in the system? Well, I mean, that is a really big problem um, uh, in, uh, you know, not just in Britain. We, you know, nepotism is prevalent in, in, everywhere. Um, I think, you know, you know, you'd be mad not to use the opportunities uh, available to you and the contacts available to you. And I think, um, you know, just because it might seem unfair to someone else doesn't mean you shouldn't you shouldn't use those. But I do, um, I do think there is a big problem with Netflix, and particularly, uh, you know, in, in London uh, with internships. I think, you know, it's incredibly hard for people who, um, you know, aren't from London to actually. Um, get these internships in London and, and what well, I suppose to be able to live in London when most of these internships are paying people pr practically nothing or just uh, just expenses. So I think that's a problem and obviously that you know, creates a um, uh, you know, advantage to um, people from London and people with uh, sort of, uh, rich parents. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's something which we can, um, we can uh, you know, we will never, we'll never fix it totally. But uh, we can try, and uh, you know, I think um, I, I I always uh, like to, I guess, give people who are willing to work hard a chance, and, and I'll always 
I'll always uh, have that attitude towards things. And, um, and yeah, so, um, I mean, personally, I, I uh, don't intend to uh, give anyone a job just because of you know, who they are or, or you know, who their parents are. Um, and I guess you guys have all worked pretty hard to get here. And I, I don't know if there's much bribery that goes with it. I'm sure, there's a, a bit, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fair question. Um, I guess the, the, the real reason I, I signed up to Made in Chelsea is because I knew that a show like this would be a massive hit in America. And I uh, saw it as an easy way to just capture the market in one foul swoop in America. And uh, so we're waiting on it to go over there, and, and when it does, um, uh, I'll have the last laugh. <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, well, uh, going back to that, um, you know, being um, uh, you know, involved in these start various startups before Made in Chelsea, um, I, I've seen a lot of companies fail, and I've been involved in a lot of companies that have failed. Um, I won't go into uh, all of the ones that have failed, because I've been here for a long time. Um, but I think the, one of the things that I noticed that was sort of make or break about these things was being able to draw attention to yourself, being able to draw attention to your product. And um, I guess the, uh, you know, the um, prospect of having national TV exposure for you know, the various products that I had um, was, I guess, too hard to turn down. Um, so yeah, but it, you know, I think um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, aren't you worried that you'll be discredited? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure, of course. But um, you know, hopefully the people I meet and the people that I get to talk to uh, will see that I'm not some sort of weird, stuttery dude on TV, and, 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 uh, and I can talk to them and, and maybe they'll come to realize that I actually do you know a bit of, about what I'm talking about. And, you know, I can never be totally sure, they might still hate me, maybe, but, um, but you know, yeah, any, yes? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> uh, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't name names. I actually, I mean, it was, it was a weird, it was a weird, um, uh, uh, well, I guess, I, so I went, I went there, I went to, to uh, apply for Filthy, uh, and um, Philosophy and Theology, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I was, I was, I was sort of pooled, I guess, and, which I thought was a good thing, um, and I had to stay longer than anyone else applying for my course at my college, which uh, so I was like, wow, and that's really, um, have, have this in the bag. <laughs> or they're really indecisive, one, one of the two. Um, and then, uh, so I had done like sort of four or five interviews, um, and then I was told that I was finished and that I could go home. So uh, I naturally went to the pub. Um, I, yeah, I went to the pub in Oxford. And uh, then I got a call saying, oh, actually, like after I'd been at the pub since about 12, saying you've got another interview at this college called St. Stephen's College. Um, and so I, I was actually pretty drunk by this point. Um, and uh, so I, uh, well, I had no idea if this was what, what, what actually got, got me rejected, who knows. Um, so I sort of went along to this interview, and in the, uh, in the um, interview, there was a sort of um, one of the monks at uh, 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 the warden, um, a couple of professors, um, and they asked me various sort of intimidating questions. Well, I thought the interview went great. Um, <laughs> but uh, I probably stunk with gin and tonics. Um, so who knows, you know, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not going to name exactly which one, because they probably all rejected. There was probably a mutual thing, like, no, we cannot have this guy. <laughs> um, we cannot have this guy at this, at this university. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so, yes? Um, have you had much feedback from MPs about sexy MP? Yes, actually. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, I have, I have. So, um, I, 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 I know quite a few MPs uh, already, but um, so I, I, I've been in to, I guess, speak to quite a few, uh, uh, well, about other things, and, and I, after I launched Sexy MP, it was quite interesting to get their feedback. Um, 
what's actually interesting is there are quite a few MPs in, it was actually banned in Parliament. They banned it because too, too many MPs were looking at it. <laughs> and trying, trying to vote themselves up. Um, but uh, they actually, they, there are some that actually introduce each other as they're ranking on, so they introduce, so they say, oh, number 39, this is number 140. <laughs> uh, which I, that really, I, and, and I think they still do that to this day, which I think is a massive achievement. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I've, been, I've been waiting to, um, well, I mean, yeah, so, that, so, that, so they, they will, I think, quite enjoy it. They, they, actually, another quite interesting story, when I, when I, when I, when I launched it, there was a, um, uh, uh, a Westminster-based IP address that was uh, that had hacked the system and pushed Gordon Brown to the top, <laughs> uh, which I found quite interesting. Um, and and uh, yeah, I thought I thought uh, you know I can imagine probably I, oh I was just imagining Gordon Brown getting one of his sort of aides in, in Westminster to rope in some computer hacker. <laughs> um, but but, uh, but yeah, I've, been, I've been waiting to launch Sexy Peer for a while. Uh, I'm not sure. What do, what do you guys think? Do you think it's a, do you think it's a good idea? Do you, do you think there are sexy peers? Who do you think is the sexiest peer? <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> uh, no. Well, I'll, 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 I'll see. But yeah, uh, I did get quite a lot of good, positive feedback. There are a few who didn't like it. I think one in particular was Eric Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but I, I, I hope you've enjoyed uh, you know, using it and voting and, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, next question. Yes? Oh, this may seem like a silly question. But no, no, no. What, what exactly inspired you to start Sex Therapy? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a silly question at all, I mean, it's a silly website, but I guess, um, I guess I just... I'd had the idea for a while, um, and I just never really got around to doing it. I had, I mean, I had the idea for a long time, but nearly a year. And I was busy with other things, and, and then eventually I sort of, I finished one project and just sort of sat down with uh, my business partner, and I was just like, well, I've got this other thing, we, should, we, should we just do it? And uh, so we did it, and uh, it, was, it was hilarious, but when, when we, we, we were just playing around with it, and then we, we, we uh, we tweeted it. Um, it was just a, a pretty incredible response. It was, it was it was it was amazing to see how quickly it grew. Um, and I think that's probably one of the most inspiring inspiring things is, is, is about the internet is that you can just have you can just build something, um, which you know obviously it's but it's a lot of work to build it and, and and stuff like that. But you can build something and then immediately get you know a mass mass response to it, which I think is kind of um, yeah, which they're trying to actually change. You know. So bad people. Um, so I guess I don't know if there are any Americans here. Any Americans here? Good, good. I'm I'm half American actually, so I'm following the uh, GOP primaries quite quite avidly. You guys, you guys following the uh, Republican primaries? Probably not. Probably not. How many guys know Ron Paul? What do you guys think of Ron Paul? No. Do you think he's nuts? What do you think the, uh, the rest of the uh, Republican establishment is nuts? Anyway, well, we won't get into politics here. <laughs> uh, but, yes, well, I mean, uh, in case you probably were wondering, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a libertarian, and that's how I would identify myself. Um, but anyway, more questions. Let's not get into. Yes. What do the Aussies in the main Chelsea do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, not much really. I guess they do made in Chelsea for a living. <laughs> Spencer doesn't really do much. He was. He had a, he had a stint at a, a brokerage. I can. Um, uh, but I think uh, they were probably after made in Chelsea came out looking for a, a way to. Give them a quick answer. <laughs> but I mean, no. I mean, they're all they're all good friends of mine. But yeah, I guess they um, they very much uh, they I, I guess they see the show as a way of um, promoting themselves, whereas I see it as a way of promoting my businesses, um, which is I guess the crucial difference. But uh, yeah, they mostly. Well, Amber actually is uh, kind of similar to me. 
because uh, she has uh, my flash trash. I don't know if you, has anyone ever bought anything from my flash trash? Just out of interest. Have you? Oh, cool. I'll tell it. Um, but uh, yeah, she's she's uh, someone who I really respect in the show. She's actually very smart and uh, well socially aware, but also um, you know she's got a very successful business, which is now um, the third biggest online jewelry boutique in the world. So that answers your earlier question: why it's good to do reality TV if you've got businesses to promote. Um, yeah. Uh, wait, the other one's um, Amber uh, Rosie. I think's got a blog. I don't know. How, do you guys? Do you guys play fan of Rosie? <laughs> yeah, she gets she gets a little stick. She's a nice girl, but she's just um, kind of misguided about how to treat people. But um, <laughs> but um, uh, what else? I I can't forget all the names. Hugo Hugo works in PR. Um, um, uh, Jamie Lang doesn't really do much. <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, it's me. I mean, it's, you know, he's got candy cases. Yeah. Uh, Binky. Binky, Binky, Binky was um, uh, basically a receptionist at a, at a hedge fund, uh, and uh, which? Yeah, sorry. Can I? Yeah, question. Um, I, the thing is, like, I, I never really intended to, but um, I, 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 no, yeah, I never really intended to. I never really intended to have an agent or anything like that. Um, I, uh, I eventually sort of caved to pressure, and so now I have an agent, which seems like the weirdest thing in the world. Do any of you have an agent? <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so, so there are these TV production companies that want me to do like, another show, which is, I think, about me. <laughs> um, which I, I don't know, I, I kind of, I'm kind of scared about doing. I don't know, I've never really... I, 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 actually, this is, I guess, um, sort of interesting. I mean, I, I, uh, like, because I did it to promote my businesses, I was very much less prepared for the whole, you know, fallout from it, I guess. Uh, you know, screaming schoolgirls and all that. But um, but uh, but it's been sort of interesting. It's been a it's been a you know it's been a fascinating experience. And I wouldn't necessarily uh, well I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm a sex symbol. But I, I guess I can't really. I don't know. Am I? <laughs> Can we have a show of hands about who wants to have sex with me? <laughs> See? <laughs> oh yes, this guy over here. Wants to <laughs> spending errors, but I corrected those, which really didn't happen again. But, um, no, yeah, so I guess different reasons. Agne didn't really do much. <laughs> she had a bit of a, um, I guess, like, uh, yeah, she had a bit of a bad attitude. Um, so I had to let it go. Actually, she, she, she quit, and I. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all a big plan. It was all, it was all planned. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so everyone uh, seems to seems to, uh, I guess, and no, through no fault of their own, get this this part of the show wrong. A lot of people think the whole thing is fake and staged and, and scripted and stuff like that. And like there are elements of it which are contrived uh, and set up because you wouldn't really be able to, I guess, film the same type of show without you know having cameras set up and on runners and things like that. But um. Yeah, you know, we're never given a script. I've never been given a script in my entire time there. Um, 
we get, I guess we know sort of, um, because we have constant conversations with the people who are producing the show, to give them ideas about, I guess, where they're going to film and what they're going to film. So we, we sort of know who we're going to film with, and, and we, we know what happened before, but we don't really know what's going to happen after that. So I guess it is organic in a sort of day-by-day -day sense. But, uh, but, it, which, which is, but a lot of, what a lot of people also don't realize is that we film so long for what is quite a small amount of uh, footage in the actual show. Like we'll film, um, you know, we might film, for, for one scene we'll film an hour and a half and then it'll get cut down to like one and a half minutes. So there's a lot of stuff that gets cut off in the cutting room floor. A lot of, uh, a lot of gold which is lost but can't be helped. No, they don't plan out story onto the whole season. Like, you never really know what's going to happen. Um, and so it's kind of, um, so a lot of the times when you're watching it on, on, on TV six weeks later, you're sort of like, what? I didn't know that, that happened. Um, so, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not really planned. It's not, I mean, the thing, also the things that people seem to think are real are usually fake, and the things that people think are fake are usually real. Um, give you, I'm trying to find, think of an example. Um, I can't think of one. Next question. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> Are they leaving? Oh, no. <laughs> I, yes, it's, it's, it's Mark Francis. He is real. He's a legend. He's a legend. Yes. How intrusive did you find filming into your personal life? Um, did you think it worked? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess um, at the beginning I was kind of daunted by the whole thing. Um, uh, but I guess you just have to sort of really, like, to get everything you can from a process like that, you really do have to open yourself up a bit. And you have to prepare yourself for the fact that there are going to be a lot of people you don't know who are interested in you. And they're going to do digging and dig around and try and find, find more information about you. And, and I guess, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I haven't seen really any, anything immediately bad about it. People generally seem to, I guess, like what I've what I what I what I've done and and uh, how I've come across. Because you never know, like how you yeah, actually, particularly the first season, you never really you have no idea about how people are going to perceive you, and you're constantly like thinking, like, God, if I say that, is the whole public going to like hate me and like even have death threats and stuff like that? But um, but yeah, it's 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 quite sort of vindicating almost to. Um, to, I guess, have positive feedback from people and to be invited to speak at Oxford. That's pretty cool. Yes, yeah? Why are you going to Um, yes, in, no. <laughs> no, I, in the first season, I don't know if you guys watched the first season, um, uh, I, uh, I was very much, you know, I was new to the whole process and, and they were kind of mean to me. <laughs> um, and they sort of, um, they used bits which weren't meant to be filmed, like sort of when we were just sort of preparing for a scene or whatever, and used that as the actual scene, which is, is kind of harsh, but that's just the nature of TV is that they're always going to be um, pricks in charge. Um, but, uh, but then in the second season, I, I guess I was more experienced about how to handle these things, and, and so now I'm quite happy with how I've come across in the scene. I mean, you sort of had to, obviously, I don't know. Remember the infamous skateboarding accident. <laughs> <laughs> the annoying thing about that is I actually do skateboard and I'm actually quite good. Um, but but it doesn't come across, and everyone, you know, I think I think I think it's fair to say everyone thinks that I uh, I, I uh, just fall over a lot. <laughs> and can I actually just make that clear? I filmed that scene like two or three times before not falling over, and then they were like, "No, can we do it one more time?" And then on that time, I fell over. And that's the one they used so, <laughs> to give you uh, uh, yeah, an idea about how mean they can be. Yes. Well, how much of a say do you have as to what's common TV and what's cut? Um, very, very little. Um, very, very little. I mean, the thing is, they can't really. I mean, because the thing is, if everyone had a say about what goes into it, you couldn't really make a show like that. Um, I mean, uh, it would be very difficult to. Um, so, I mean, sometimes, you know, if we see. Uh, if we, if we do have a, a sort of screening beforehand, um, for, before it goes on air, that is, and there's something that we really don't like, we can say, look, I mean, you don't have to take it out, but I would really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, so um, yeah, I've never done that, because I'm 
really proud of everything. No. <laughs> anyway, so, in a question? Yes? I don't mean academic sense together. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, they're not. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> um, uh, I think Kagi's in London, he's in Dubai. Yeah? Well, actually, so we, um, I, was, I, was, I was at Edinburgh and I got this message from this production company called Monkey Kingdom, which is actually owned by NBC. God, I really need to. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, they're going to do work or something important. Um, granted. Um, so, yes, so, the, so I was at Edinburgh and I got this message and I sort of just ignored it. And then I was back in London working on this uh, telecom. Thing, this telecom startup, and um, I got a call from them, and I uh, sort of basically agreed to talk to them on the basis that I knew other people who would, who would probably want to do it. They'd read about me in Tatler, um, and and which immediately made me suspicious, and um, and so because uh, I read Tatler, does that, and then um, and so I agreed to talk to them, and then they basically said they got commissioned to do a pilot, so. So I wouldn't have had really any obligation to do the actual show if they got commissioned. So I made this pilot with Amber and Rosie and a few other people who aren't in the show now. Um, uh, but I think kind of regret it because they were always sucking up to us. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, so then it was it was quite it was kind of a different show back then, and it, it wasn't called Made in Chelsea, believe it or not. Um, and so then we suggested other people who we were had been friends with around London, uh, and, uh, and then we sort of had a cast, and then, and then they brought in a couple of other people, like Cheska and Ollie, who we didn't know, and I guess weren't from London, um, and then they were the sort of other group. Yeah. Yes. Why did they decide to call it Made in Chelsea? Yeah, well that's, a, that's a, it's a good question. Um, basically, so we were sold on a show initially, like that wasn't meant to be based anywhere. It was meant to be based in London, right? Was, they said, "Oh, do you want to be in the London version of The Hills?" Uh, and I was like, um, um, "Well, yeah." Right. And um, and then, so like two weeks before it actually went to air, we'd already filmed like loads of it, and they were like, "Oh, we're going to call it Made in Chelsea." Um, and I was like, "Well, don't, we don't we don't all actually live in." <laughs> so they sort of made us look like frauds, <laughs> but we're not, we're not, well we're not, well I mean I guess some of them are, but, uh, yeah, another question, yes? What were they initially going to be uh, There were a few names being thrown around, um, there was th one of them, actually because they uh, found us initially in Tatler's Little Black Book, they wanted to call it the Little Black Book. I'm not sure how happy Tatler would have been about that. But I think that would have probably been a cooler name, really. Mm. That's naff, really. Maybe Charles is a bit naff. Do you think? I don't know, it's all right, but, <laughs> but I guess they. But I guess they wanted to sort of um, focus on an area in West London which is, you know, known for being, uh, you know, sort of opulent and uh, full of sort of sport rich kids. Any other? Yes. I grew up um, all over the world, really. Um, I was born in London, then I went to Japan, so my dad was working out there, and uh, climbed the top of Mount Fuji. I was a baby. Now my mum's back. Um, and then moved back to Paris and was was uh, in Paris for a bit, and then went to Connecticut in uh, America, and then uh, went back to Paris and went to London, and then. Went back to the States, to Dallas, and then uh, spent a lot of time in Florida, and then moved back to Monaco for a bit, and then <laughs> went to South Africa, and then came back to London. The rest is history. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of different places. Yes? <laughs> Eclipse my business fund mine. Um, no, because I think people will. I mean, Men Charles is going to end soon. You know, it's not going to be, be around forever. Whereas fund mine will be around forever. <laughs> and 
so will everything else I do. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think so. I think I, well, that's exactly why I uh, did the show was to promote Unmine and, and my other pro projects. So. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. As what? What would you say? With the whole spider population, it's probably in real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, I kind of got bored of that whole thing as soon as um, she rejected me. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Like, they obviously, you know, that will they, won't they uh, sort of thing is. Um, what 14 year old girls who watch E4 want. So, you know, we have to pander to those people, unfortunately. Hopefully, uh, you know, the more erudite viewers <laughs> will uh, we'll see, see, uh, see the uh, positive things in the show. Yeah? Yes? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, well, I mean, so Freddie uh, Farrier, who's been my best friend since we were like 13, um, obviously we, it was quite cool to be able to do something like that with someone you've known for so long because, you know, although the world changes around you, you don't change because you've still got the same sort of friendship. Um, but, uh, yeah, the relationships with uh, the other cast members has, have definitely changed. Um, you know, it's just natural, really, like, you don't... And also, like, I think there's, there's this sort of overbearing feeling where, you know, if you hang around with these people too much, you're, like, actually in Made in Chelsea. I don't really want to actually, like, believe that I'm in Made in Chelsea in my normal life, you know what I mean, if that makes sense. Not that it's, not, not that it's a bad thing, it's just, like, I don't want to be a walking cliche. <laughs> not, uh, well, I don't know, maybe I am, and I'm sort of in denial. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no, I mean, like... Like, we still obviously hang out, with, and there's just, I mean, it's kind of, kind of like being a part of a really big pop group, because we're all like, <laughs> we're all, we've all been, in, been through this weird <laughs> process together where uh, we've all suddenly, like, we're, uh, like our friendships have just suddenly been put in the public eye, um, which is kind of strange, but, uh, but you know, you get over it, and uh, yeah, don't believe everything you read in the press, so I'm sure you probably know that already. Unless you don't, I don't know. Uh, yes? Have you noticed the constant effect on your neighbors or at least the pages? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, well, I launched a, uh, another company in the initial, uh, uh, sort of in the first season, but I've taken that down temporarily. Um, and that in sort of two months, basically quadrupled the which is obviously pretty spectacular. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, Fun Mind's been brilliantly well received, and we've got a lot of good press and a lot of. Uh, and it's you know it's, it, it it opens up a lot of ex unexpected doors. Like um, you know, I highly doubt had I not done Mid Charles, I would have been invited to speak at Oxford. In that means, is, so uh, can't be all that bad. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, for the moment, because we're trying to fill the, fill the system with, because, you know, this sort of network phenomenon, you know, you have to have sort of people on there before you uh, can actually have a network. So we're allowing people to, to, to we're, we're, we're basically putting projects on the system. We're allowing people to put projects on the system for free. So if any of you guys have any business ideas or anything like that, or you're working on any projects, you have uh, a couple of weeks still to put on uh, projects and have them basically... Uh, proposed to have a free application. Not everyone will get through, but, um, but uh, so our revenue actually comes from a variable fee structure um, based on um, variables within your proposal. So whether your 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 company is trading or not, whether you, well, like how much money you're asking for, how much equity you're offering, and then, so so we can act, we allow the entrepreneurs to actually self-select themselves uh, uh, into the system, and and investors can set preferences which. Um, will filter out which projects that they don't think are, are necessarily the type of projects they would want to invest in. Any questions?
Any other questions? <laughs> Sorry? Yes. No, I mean, uh, look. Okay, so I don't want to like, I, I don't want to go too too much into it, but I will. Um, um, Millie is a great girl. I've, I've known her for a long time. We've had our own sort of history in, in so many words, um, and uh, she is um, an incredibly. I won't say that. She's a great girl. She's a <laughs> and um, I love her to pieces, and uh, she, but I think, um, I guess, she uh, has come across incredibly well on TV, if that says anything. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll be doing other things as well. I mean, I mean, Fred and I have always done comedy since we were at school, so we, we've always just like, quite enjoyed doing that. And um, I never really thought we'd actually do it as in, um, in well, actually do any of it or like a sort of, I guess, and have people watch it and enjoy it, which is, which is fun. Maybe we'll do a show at Edinburgh. Um, but I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I guess uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But hopefully, I mean, what do, you, what do you want more of? I was just going to go really just more of the journey. Does that kind of balance it between the two? Is it either intentional or intentionally Oh, no, it's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Everyone's, everyone's like, Francis is so unintentionally funny. It's like, oh, well, thanks. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually working pretty damn hard. <laughs> It's, uh, it's kind of like a bit of an out-of-body experience because um, also you film it so long ago and then you watch, and you watch it and so you've sort of forgotten what you've said in that scene. Um, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's like incredibly annoying because uh, you don't, you know, sometimes they put the you know, things in that make you look a bit silly. But, um, but I guess you get used to it pretty quickly. Um, it's amazing how, you, how you know, quickly you become accustomed to totally wrapped and weird scenarios like being on national television. You just get used to it, I guess, like, like anything. Yeah. Why are you thinking about <laughs> being on TV? <laughs> Why not do it? <laughs> hmm? uh, have you seen The Only Way is Essex? And if so, what do you make of it? <laughs> and perhaps more interestingly, its characters? Um, I, I, I've seen like two episodes. Um, I uh, just connect, I can't understand how these girls can wear so much makeup. <laughs> like, it literally looks like they've applied it with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's incredible. But um, I guess it works for them. I mean, they seem to. No, I mean, I, I don't think it really works for them. That's <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I've met a few of them just randomly because, uh, or just, just from my like, various events and things like that. Uh, Arge, do you know Arge? <laughs> he's actually a nice guy. Um, um, yeah, he's quite nice. M Mark Wright just seems a bit simple. And he, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> um, he uh, said to me, he actually said to me that he wanted, he, he, he was thinking about moving to Chelsea. I was like, surely you can't say that. Isn't that treason? <laughs> anyway, it's Essex. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that are like this, we sort of speak to them because obviously we're in sort of similar situations, but they're not really 
people I would uh, obviously be friends with in any other life. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm sorry if you are related I, I to them. Don't don't <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt anyone else would be related to them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that me? Yeah. No, I'm just, they're, 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 they've been really, really promising. But, uh, um, any other questions? Yes? The revenue? The revenue is coming from a, a variable fee structure from the entrepreneur's side. So to, they're basically essentially buying access to our investors network. So, but if, for a one-off fee, so it will be, you know, it, it varies from about 30 to 100 pounds, depending on variables in the proposal. <coughs> Sorry? Yeah, I mean, incredibly, incredibly wide spectrum. Um, from all around the world, we've had um, some, some pretty amazing, um, some pretty amazing projects, some very, very random off the wall projects. Some girl wanted to make a sort of a, a bunny milkshake thing. I can't really, I didn't really understand the, uh, the uh, revenue model, but. Um, sorry? Yes, a lot of high tech companies. And we're, ac we're actually, we're actually um, accepting more high tech companies on uh, for pre pre proposals than than most others. We've got quite a few financial uh, um, financial companies as well, which are uh, well looking for growth capital, and who we've put onto the system as well. And a couple of mining companies. Yes? Do you have Yeah, but the, all the other competitors are terrible. I mean, that's why we set up the company, because they're like, like uh, the options that we had when we were trying to raise capital were, um, you know, pretty slim. I mean, the other angel investment networks online, uh, like the Angel Investment Network, or, or there's Venture Den, um, and Angelist, where, I mean, they're just pretty rudimentary, and they don't uh, create an environment where people are actually, uh, well, firstly can secure, um, well, share more information about their project, but also protect their IP. And so we, we wanted to create a system that both did that, and also um, matched projects to investors' preferences. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there are there are some competitors, but they're not very good. Yeah. Um, it depends. I mean, we uh, you know we also, we also you know screen a lot of the projects as well. And if there's a project that I like, then I might invest in it myself. And and in the, in that sense, I'll probably um, be heavily involved in, in that project. Um, depending on what it is, you know, depending if I, if I, if I understand it, then I'll be involved in it. Um, I wouldn't really necessarily invest in projects that I don't understand, unless they're like, you know, unless I get another expert to say, yeah, that's a good project. But uh, yeah, I do, I do generally involve, involve myself in any project that I invest in personally. How, and, and also, like, we encourage, we incentivize um, entrepreneurs and investors to um, notify us if they, if they actually do find a project and, and a, a project finds finance. Because obviously it's in our interest to um, market that success story, uh, but it's also in the company's interest if they're looking for more publicity to um, to, uh, uh, to inform us of that. And you know, you know, in, in that sense, I you know I will become involved in those as well. And um, we've got a few that have found investment already, um, just from in the initial private phase. Yes. Would you say it's better to go into a company, go to a startup, rather than go down to start a startup? Um, I mean, I, not really. I mean, I, I, I do think that um, it's good to, it's good. To, I mean, it's, it's good to learn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is all, all some exercise to deflate my ego. Uh, no, no. Uh, it, it, it's good to you know. The thing is, whatever. If there's an opportunity for you to be a part of a startup, um, then do it because it's, you'll learn a hell of a lot. Um, I think there's you know like there's nothing wrong with just going out and doing it yourself. I mean, I think I mean I'm, I think you'll learn far more far more from um, I suppose executing a business um, 
uh, then you will you'll have a far more you know, sort of enriching and edifying experience. You know, starting up a company than you will at business school. You know, and, and, I, and I think that's generally pretty understood. I mean, anything that you'll you'll learn starting a business, you know, will probably be, um, I guess, uh, well, obviously it's practical knowledge as well. I mean, so uh, I mean, it's whatever. If you see an opportunity, or you create an opportunity, um, go for it. But uh, but yeah, if you know a good startup which you can get in on, I mean, try and get equity in it. Don't work for for free or for a salary. I mean, unless you want to. Yep. Uh, my book is basically a set of uh, principles for uh, aspiring, uh, well, fledgling tycoons, I guess. The name is, uh, is still uh, uh, you know, up in the air, but, uh, but the publishing deal is, is uh, moving forward. So, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to watch that space. I'll, I'll, yeah, maybe I'll come back and talk about it then. Yep. No. Um, the, the, th the thing is, like, we, we, it was. It, I never. I've never been said that we went out in in uh, in, in the press. But I've been. There, we'd obviously been photographed together. We had a, like a sort of small thing a, a while ago, and it's just obviously been blown out of proportion. Um, but it's a shame because, like, I like for the entire first season, I was being asked this question repeatedly, repeatedly, and I just, like, just never, I never sort of took the bait. I just never talked about it. And then, uh, you know, in the second season, I kept getting asked, asked this, and I was just like, well, look, I thought, okay, well, I did this big interview, and I thought, okay, well, if I just nip this in the bud, they'll never ask me again. And and I said, you know, look, I just we 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 had a thing, you know, I, at the time I was in a sort of private setting, I was working on my own things. And, um, and I didn't personally want that, that kind of exposure. Um, and, and it just got massively blown out of proportion. And yeah, um, but uh, so yeah, it's, it's a shame. She's, she's a really nice girl, but it's, it was never anything serious. But she's hot, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I fancy relighting the old flame tonight. Sorry? You realise she's here in Oxford. Is she? Yeah, she's in America. Sorry? She's in America. She's in America, she's in America at the moment. Yeah. The thing's over. She's she 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 gone back now. Sorry? Yeah, I thought she was at Oxford. Is, uh, is she still here? Yeah, she's still here. She's at Worcester College. No, no, no. I mean, the thing is, no, I mean, I have no interest in rekindling in Oxford. Why? <laughs> Just throwing out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm secretly working with someone else. <laughs> yeah. Get it, get the story. Oh, well, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe you're working with the sun, not maybe. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but she's a nice girl, but no, so it was never anything serious. Can't go into how it looks. Yes, yeah. Sorry, this is silly, but why is Portrait in season one? <laughs> uh, okay, so like, I, um, I, I had said to the production, I was like, oh, because a friend of mine was going to be painting my portrait, 